this video, we're going to take a look at creating a Next.js project using HiGraph and Cursor. You can download Cursor for free at cursor.com. This is a VS Code type code editor that allows you to use uh, various AI models to generate code on the fly. In this demo, we'll use the HiGraphics streaming movie platform demo from HiGraph's marketplace to pull the data and create a quote unquote Netflix clone. Come to highgraph.com slash marketplace and grab the Hygraphics movie streaming platform demo. This will allow you to clone this into your Hygraph project. Once that's cloned in, you'll have an API ready to go. You can head over to your project settings to make sure you have what you need. From here, we'll head over to Cursor. Cursor is going to look like a standard VS Code instance. In fact, when you install it, you can give it the information from VS Code to have all of your extensions as well as your theming. You can see here, I've got dark mode. You can have any of the VS Code themes that you would like. When you open your project, here I have a completely blank directory that I've opened. Uh, you're not gonna see a whole lot. But if you hit Command L or Control L, you will get your chat prompt. The chat prompt is where you're going to be putting your prompts that will make this work for you. I have a prompt that has worked for me in the past to generate this, and we'll walk through it a little bit. So the prompt says, make a Next.js project with Tailwind. I want to use Tailwind for styling that is designed to look like Netflix. This project should have a home page and a dynamic route pulling data from a high graph endpoint with a GraphQL query that looks like this. So in other words, I want a home page and I want to use Next.js's dynamic routing with my API. I know specifically uh, based on my experience using uh, this starter, that the query should look something like this. I've got a title and then I'm pulling specific movie information, not from high graph, but from a third party API that we're using content federation to pull in. You can see here, I've got title, plot, director, genre, runtime, and poster. Poster is an image. Then I've also got an IMDB ID in case I need that, as well as the slug for each individual movie. And then you can see here, I have a movie poster in the URL. This is an override that allows me to override the movie poster pulling in from that third party API. And you can see the next thing I tell uh, the AI is that each movie page should check for a movie poster URL, this, uh, this piece in the data right here. And then if it doesn't exist, then use that fallback from our third party API instead. Then I also specify that I want the homepage to have a card style for each, uh, each movie. The project should also be set up to use the images and the image component for Next.js, and that requires a little bit of configuration. So I've told it I want it to use wildcard.graphassets.com, or uh, this is the domain that comes from that third-party API. And then I also specify, because I want this to be using the most modern versions of everything, that this should use the app router and not use something like get static paths instead. So I'm gonna enter that and it's gonna give me a lot of work to do on my end. So I'll just start by following all these instructions. So we'll go ahead and run what it tells me to here where it says create next app, latest. Uh, in fact, I'm not going to uh, run this specifically because I want to run this myself. So I'll open up a terminal, I'll run npx create next app at latest. And then I need to specify what directory it's gonna go into. I don't want it to go into a subdirectory here. So I'll say dot slash for that. And then I'll want TypeScript and Tailwind and ESLint. So let's grab all these and see if that can short circuit the, uh, the helper functions in the CLI here. Uh, ask if I want the source directory, I'm gonna go with a yes on that. App router, yes and then customize with default alias. Uh, yeah, sure, uh, that's fine. So it's gonna install all that for me. Again, this is no longer the AI at work. This is just the way that next CLI works. Uh, then we're gonna need to install a few things. It wants both GraphQL and GraphQL request. I'm not entirely sure about GraphQL, but I definitely want GraphQL request. I typically use that. We'll install those. Uh, and then here is our first issue that we're gonna have to deal with. We have our next config. Let me copy this, go into our next config and we'll paste it in. But you can see it didn't quite pull my, uh, my wildcard. Your mileage may vary on this. Uh, every time I run this, I get slightly different code. So instead of the media, I actually want this to be asterisk.graphassets.com and that's going to allow it to be on whatever subdomain of the CDN that we use 
that your project has, whether that's US East or West or one of the European based ones, this will allow it to be whatever it needs to be and get you the fastest responses. Then it's gonna want me to create a client, which is absolutely the way I would like to do that. Uh, so let's create this file maybe in our source directory uh, in a utils folder and I'll call this client dot, looks like this is JavaScript, so we'll make it client.js. Copy this in here and we can see it's getting the GraphQL client, it's looking for a process.env.highgraph uh, endpoint and then it's creating a new client. So that also says we'll probably need a .env file even though that's not the next step here. Let's go ahead and do that just to make sure we don't forget. So there's gonna be .env.local and this is gonna be where we put that uh, high graph endpoint. And don't forget to save your files along the way. I get stuck in that when I'm doing this. All right, let's copy this over into this endpoint. We'll save that in. We shouldn't need the env file anymore. Uh, it wants me to create a types file uh, for my data. So this implies that we might be using TypeScript. Um, yeah, sure, we can do that. I'm gonna go ahead and skip it for now until I see, okay, here's how we're using it in a types directory. So in our source fol uh, folder, we're gonna put a types directory and we're gonna have a movie.ts, I'm assuming is what that needs to be. And so we'll, we'll grab this, copy it in and save it to that file. Update the homepage uh, with all this information. So let's go ahead and copy that, go on over to our app directory Inside of our app directory is our page. Our page is gonna be the home page. And let's take a look. Uh, we don't have this component yet. I'm guessing we're gonna be making that soon. It is picking up my types, which is nice. Uh, GraphQL client is apparently what it wanted me to have. I'm gonna kind of go review that. Did it actually tell me to do that? No, it did not. So uh, let's change this from lib to utils and from GraphQL client to just client. There we go, thank you TypeScript for recognizing all of that for me. Super handy to work both with AI and TypeScript at the same time. All right, then yes, we do need a movie card component, so let's copy that. Uh, and that's gonna be in the components directory at movie card. I don't have a components directory yet, but we can certainly make that happen. Uh, so let's make a new file at components slash movie card dot TSX here. Uh, paste in the code that it gives me. You can see here we are using that image uh, and it is finding an image URL and it is doing what I wanted it to. So movie.movieposter URL or the poster coming from the data. So that's a good thing. Save that, save our home page. It's not recognizing this component card. We'll get to that in a minute. I probably put the directory in a spot where it's not finding it. That's okay. Create a dynamic route for the pages. So again, it's not telling you what you need to do here. You do need to go into your app and we're gonna create a new file. This will be at slash movie slash uh, slug slash page dot TSX. And we can copy the movie in as well. And again, it's not finding this. Oh, cause again, we changed that on the fly. So we'll change this to utils and this will be the client. And it does pull that incorrectly. So we're good there. We keep on scrolling with what our prompt came up with and says the setup creates. Okay, so theoretically, it says here, oh, here it says remember to set up your high graph endpoint. So that is what we want. We've already done that. Uh, let's double check here. Let's close out this page and see if the home page still not recognizing that component. So we're probably gonna get a bug around that, but let's take a look. npm run dev in our console, or our terminal. We are getting module is not defined. So let's have our AI figure that out. It's because it's using the wrong version of all of this. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into our next config and instead of module.exports, we are going to be export default. Save that, run it again. All right, this time it is in fact running. Uh, we are getting no errors. So let's take a look and see what this looks like in the browser. All right, so we are still getting an error. This time it's an error around graph assets, um, which means that our next image isn't properly configured. Um, Ah, that's because this is not uh, the correct new way of handling this in Next. 
So let's ask the AI to uh, set up the images in next config using remote patterns. All right, so this is actually what we want to look like. Uh, so here we've got images, remote patterns. We're looking at HTTPS for graph assets. And for this, save that. Should reload automatically at this point. And here we have a Netflix clone. I'll also be honest, the thing that uh, I did while testing this is I had a red background to this. So the actual structure for the way this looks is different uh, based on the time that I ran it. But we'll go take a look at JAWS. You can see JAWS exists at slash movie slash JAWS, and it has all the information. All this is being pulled directly from uh, HiGraph or from our third-party API that is integrated via Content Federation. So I can click on any of these, all this information pulling from HiGraph inside of Content Federation or from the HiGraph data set, all built within, I don't know, we'll call that seven minutes uh, using Cursor's AI and just a little bit of Next.js know-how on top of that.